Due to the coronavirus, I have been unable to take the photographs that I had wished. So where possible, I have used others, for example, some snaps taken in winter when doing a recce for this walk. Please keep safe everybody. Hello, my name is Chris and I shall be your lead on this walk around Port Sunlight Village. The village was the vision of the philanthropist William Lever, who together with his brother James rented a soap factory in Warrington. The business outgrew the factory, so the Lever brothers decided to build a new factory and village on what was a piece of marshy land here on the Wirral. Building started in March 1888 and the village now contains 900 Grade 2 listed buildings. We start our walk in Windy Bank facing the main entrance of the Lady Lever Art Gallery. On the walk you will see a number of old postcards just like this one. You will also see maps like this which will show you where you are in the village. The red dot marks your spot. If you first look behind you, to your right, you will see the original Village Girls Club, later becoming the Village Residence Club, and then in 2006, the Village Museum. Turning back to the art gallery, this was opened on the 16th of December 1922, and is named after Lever's then late wife, Elizabeth. The gallery stands where there was a tidal inlet coming from Bromper Pool, which helped shape the layout of the village. Windy Bank to our left were built upon a bank of the inlet, hence its name. Walking to the left of the gallery, you will see before you a black granite obelisk. Built in 1930, it is a memorial to the first Lord Leverhulme. The figure on the top represents inspiration whilst the figures on the base represent industry, education, charity and art. The end houses on this building block were demolished, allowing a view of the memorial and art gallery from the railway. We now walk to the end of the gallery and turn right into Lower Road. Continuing along this road, we see on our right open areas with many trees. Unfortunately, in the 1970s and 80s, Dutch elm disease killed nearly a thousand trees in the village. Crossing the junction with Central Road, if you look to your right, you will see a working red telephone box. Continuing up Lodge Lane, now closed to traffic, you will see the Leverhulme Hotel. This was the original village cottage hospital, and above a door you can see the original entrance sign for the outpatients department. We now turn left into Pool Bank, named after the farm that was situated here before the village. The seats here reflect the community feel to the village that Lever was keen to promote. At the top of Pool Bank we turn right onto Circular Drive and if you now look to your right you can see behind some of the houses. The original plans for the village had such areas for garden allotments but most are now grassed or used for parking. We are now approaching Hesketh Hall. Hesketh was Lever's middle name. This was a technical institute. Lever had a great belief in education and that his employees should have more opportunities to better themselves. In later times it was used by the British Legion before being converted into 14 apartments in 2014. 
Retracing our steps, we move into Boundary Street. We are now looking across what was once a bowling green to Primrose Hill. We are heading towards what was once a Victorian terrace slum area before Lever built his village. Now even the street name plaques are posh. At the end we turn right onto Brook Street. Here you will find the railway inn built before the village was started. The owner of the inn has told me that the pock marks on the left hand side wall were caused by shrapnel when the adjoining houses were bombed in the Second World War. Opposite the inn are the Duke of York cottages. Leavers offered their workers a pension scheme and these buildings were designed for those pensioners. We now walk along Greendale Road, passing the closed off junction with the bottom of Primrose Hill. You can again see the Leverhue Memorial through the opening made specifically for that purpose. The black and white timbered buildings were modelled on Kenyon Peel Hall in Salford near Manchester. The original hall was demolished in the mid 20th century. Continuing along Greendale Road, we come to the junction with the causeway. This is where the middle arm of the tidal inlet was located before being filled in. Reaching the junction with Bolton Road, Lever was born in Bolton. We are now in the oldest part of the village. On the right is Port Sunlight Railway Station, opened in 1927, whilst on the left was the first village shop opened in 1891. It then became the post office before its present use as a cafe. Looking down Park Road, on our left, you can see where a fountain used to be. This was built to commemorate Lever's silver wedding anniversary and is now sited over the road by the Lever Social Club Bowling Green. The building was originally known as the Pavilion. To the left, this building was the Girls' Hostel, built in 1896, where single working girls were housed. It was not very popular and so was later used as a free library and museum for the workers and is now a bank. The building was designed by Maxwell and Tate, the designers of Blackpool Tower. To the right is the Gladstone Theatre. Originally Gladstone Hall, it was opened in 1891 as the men's dining room. The dining hall, which displayed paintings from Lever's collection, moved to the factory in 1910, so the hall was then used primarily for entertainment. The projection room on the end was added in 1911. The ornate stone building in front is the office entrance to the factory built in 1895, some seven to eight years after the construction of the factory began. So the first part of our walk is finished. Why don't we stop for a cup of tea before our second leg? Maybe a slice of cake as well. See you soon.